back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about orchids that I've killed and what I would do to prevent them from dying. So I'm going to share about 20 different orchids that I killed last year. Um, actually, it might be a little bit more than that. So <laughs> last year I killed about 10% of my collection. There's many different reasons for that. Some having to do with neglect, aka I didn't have time to water my collection. Um, other things having to do with plant vigor. So some of it wasn't my fault. Some of the plants were just weak to begin with. And then I had dealt with pests at some point um, and some other things repotting improperly using the wrong potting media. So I'm gonna go through um, why some of my orchids died and what I would do differently to prevent them from dying. If you guys like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. So let's jump right in. Okay, one of the reasons I lost a couple of orchids was to do with pests. So um, as I mentioned, I neglected my collection last year for an extended period of time. And what that means is I wasn't watering as much as I should have. So I was watering my collection maybe once a week, which isn't enough for a lot of things. And um, I wasn't really looking at them. I didn't flush my collection as much as I was supposed to. I think I went a period of three months without flushing them. A lot of them were fine, some of them were not. So, I mean, one of the biggest things that stood out to me with orchids that died on me were pests. So I lost two in particular because of pests. So I lost my Dendrobium uh, Pink Natasha and my Orangus Luteo Alba. Um, I lost both of these because they were infested with spider mites and by the time that I noticed it was just too late. They were lower on my shelves, they were next to each other. Um, the spider mite infestation was so bad I couldn't even see it because it was under the leaves. And um, I'll never forget with the Orangus, I picked it up and I went to rinse it and the leaves just fell apart. So it was just too far gone. Um, in order to prevent this from happening, what I would do next time is flush my collection more often because when I flush my collection, I look at the leaves, I kind of clean the leaves out, and I make sure that um, the orchids don't have any pests. So if, you know, I think I went three months without flushing, which is a really long time. If I would have done it more frequently, I would have seen these and probably prevented them from dying. So this is the first reason some of my orchids died. Another reason one of my orchids died was um, fungal infection. So, so this was my biggest loss and I'm really sad about it. My Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica, I, f I lost this orchid. I was so sad about it. It had beautiful sprays of flowers. It was so beautiful, but it had a fungal infection. I started noticing the leaves starting to yellow and it just started looking really sad. Um, the leaves were like yellow and brown on a Phalaenopsis orchid that's not normal. So I sprayed it down with Fizan 20, tried to get it to um, fix, and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, it just took over, and before I knew it, the plant was dead within two weeks. It just happened so, so quickly. So, I mean, that one I tried to prevent right away. The best thing you can do is start cutting off the infection as soon as you see it. I saw it pretty quickly. I cut a leaf, I sprayed it down with Fizan, and it just kept spreading so it was far gone. Um, so this fungal infection type things are very tricky, but that's another reason why you lose orchids sometimes. But I say if you see something, just cut it off right away, spray it down, do your best, and that's all you can do. Hi Zoe! Oh boy, another reason I lost orchids was due to the grow method. So I had all of these orchids in semi-hydro and I lost them because, wow, this cat, this cat. I lost them because they were in semi-hydro. Um, I believe they didn't enjoy the grow method and I also believe a part of it is to do... Seriously? Is she for real? Hold on. She was for real. So I had these orchids in semi-hydro. There could be many reasons why they died. Maybe they didn't like semi-hydro. Um, it's quite a lot of them though. Um, so this kind of makes me sad. I have some theories on why they didn't make it. Um, 
One of which is I didn't flush that often. So when you don't flush in semi-hydro and it dries up, salts accumulate. So it makes it a pretty bad environment for the roots. So if you're growing in semi-hydro, you definitely have to flush at least monthly. It could be that these just, I don't know if they hated the method or just the flushing wasn't enough, but they failed. And I will read them to you. This one is, this one I really like, the Dendrobium Jonathan's Glory Dark Joy. This was lovely. It was gifted to me. I don't remember, I, this definitely had water, but I don't know if it's because of the salt buildup or just didn't like semi-hydro, but this died. This one was really sad for me because it was super vigorous. And then one day they just all shriveled up and dried and it had enough water. Could be the flushing, could be that it hated semi-hydro. And I'm finding that this kind of uh, dendrobium over time declines in semi-hydro. So something to keep in mind. Dendrobium chocolate chip. That was such a shame. Another Latoria type dendrobium that didn't like semi-hydro, Dendrobium Green Flash. That was another similar type. It just, over time, after two years in semi-hydro, just died. I thought it would work out well, but it makes me want to move back to organic because over time, my Cattleyas love it, most of my Dendrobiums love it, but my Latoria types don't like it. And the one that I have left in semi-hydro, not doing the best. Oncidium Twinkle Oro. I've divided this plant many times. My mom has a piece. Several friends have pieces. Mine is dead. Didn't like semi-hydro. I don't know what to say. Should have given it wet dry cycles. Okay, another few types that don't like it. I had a Neophenicia Falcata um, hybrid. Shutero Pink. It was a pink hybrid. I can't even pronounce it. It did not like semi-hydro. It died. It was young. Another um, Neophenicia type that did not like semi-hydro, um, Neophenicia falcata newberry blush, crossed with Neophenicia falcata bubble yum. I got this from Carter and Holmes. Did not like semi-hydro, just died. And then these two, I potted them together in the same container. They were seedlings of the Epicatlia Renee Marquez. Also did not like semi-hydro. So, I mean, I'm learning as I'm growing more often Semi-hydro seems like a great grow method, but if you can't flush too much, you're going to have problems. And I'm also starting to think that some of these orchids just don't like semi-hydro in the long run. They struggle. Sure, their roots adapt, but the way that I saw the Latoria dendrobiums just decline so quickly makes me think that it might not be a viable grow method for everything. For sure, it's not for Vandas. For sure, it is not for anything that requires more wet dry cycles, but I was surprised with the Latoria types. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Okay, the next, the next type of orchids that I killed, um, was due to my environment. So I was not watering. The humidity was kind of low. <laughs> um, in the summer, New York city, humidity is high, but these, I don't think I potted them up for success in my environment. This is a lot of Vandas. So I have a lot of Vandas that I had potted in coconut husk but I shredded the coconut husk, so it didn't have pockets of moisture. A lot of them were in clay pots. I watered them just once a week, not enough. I noticed a lot of them. Rest in peace, Vandas. So Ascophenicia peaches, sad. It bloomed for me twice, it was beautiful. Um, the Vanda Costylis Memoria Clem Crosby, crossed with Mimi Palmer. I repotted this with you guys last spring, it died. Vanda Tricolor, it died. <laughs> um, Vanda Costylis, I think this faded so much, but it was a Vanda Fuchs Ocean Spray, it died. Vanda Neophenicia Falcata Green Mist, crossed with Vanda Pocky, it died. <laughs> if I could do anything different with those Vandas in my environment with the clay pots, I would put some moss in the pots and I think they would have survived. I just let them get way too dry. Vandas like humidity. They grow bare root normally, like in South Florida, they do well, but they are they have the humidity. I think watering them just once a week wasn't enough. Um, so if I could do something different with those Vandas in my environment, I'd add some moss to the mix. Um, that way, if I wasn't watering as much, at least they have some. They would have some moisture that would stay. I have two others that didn't work out in my environment because it just was too hot. 
And this one is the Pleurothallis stricta. This is a cooler grower, so it just didn't work out. This was gifted to me. I wasn't surprised that that one died. You're, if an orchid is not um, meant for your environment or, or not native to your environment, say like a Miltoniopsis is difficult for me. It's just going to not thrive. So this I'm not too sad about. I kind of knew it wasn't going to make it. I mean, it's okay. This one I was sad about because I was trying, and this one is Zygopedlum Blue Blazes, um, crossed with Arthur L. My only Zygo, I mean, I have one more. That, that other one's doing okay, but it just died on me. And these like it cooler in the, um, in the summer generally, a little bit cooler intermediate growers, I'd say. And over the summer, it got so hot. I wasn't watering so much. I didn't keep up with it. This one had moss. I just... I think it got too hot and my lack of watering. So, moving on. So I have another category of orchids that I, they just basically died because they were underwatered or different potting mix. Less so my environment, more so I potted them up incorrectly. Um, or I just, I just didn't water them well. Um, so this one's the LC Blue Angel Glove. This was in a clay pot. It just dried way too fast. It was a tiny little clay pot, not enough water. Dendrobium antenatum. I got this from Carter and Holmes. It died because it also had husk and it just didn't get enough water. It wasn't my environment. It was just not enough moisture in the pot. This one I'm sad about, Engracum didieri, crossed with sibling. This bloomed for me three, four times. I moved it to Lava Rock. It just kaput. <laughs> just too dry for, for this. If I could do it again, I would do bark and moss. How we are how we are a lava burst Puanami. This one was not super vigorous. I think I didn't give it enough water. It was in a tiny, tiny pot. Um, sadly it died on me. I think if it were in something a little bit more moisture retentive, it could have made it, but this one's a little bit tricky. This one I was sad about. Lelia Alorii Variation Orlata. This was expensive, so I was bummed about it. It bloomed twice for me. Um, I separated it, actually. I divided it so my mom has another piece, but just small pot, not enough water. It happens. And this one I was sad about. Brassilorchis Shunkiana. Just, it just didn't get enough water for a bit, and then I just saw it sulk, and then by the time I saw it was dying it was just too late so that those are the ones that just basically died because i underwatered i don't think these have anything to do with my environment i just didn't give it enough and if maybe they were in a more moisture retentive mix they would have done better all right we have a couple more and then we are done okay the next set of orchids died i believe because of the plant vigor i don't think these were necessarily 100 percent my fault they were weaker plants to begin with um so i wasn't really set up for success with them the first one is the bolera patricia mcculley Patri pacific matriarch had beautiful blooms when i repotted it it was purple inside it may have had fusarium i don't know um not a big deal in my books, but it just would never grow vigorously. The leaves were always stained. Ever since I got it, it's not like my other Oncidiums. I think it was just not a vigorous hybrid. Um, you might make fun of me for this, but all of my Sycnokee's orchids died. <laughs> so these are hard. I thought they'd be easy to grow. They're not like regular Catacetum orchids, but they just to transition them from the dormant period to the growing season is just tough and sometimes they just don't make it and the seedlings are quite small. I classified them under the plant vigor category. I just find they're not as vigorous for me. If you guys disagree, let me know down below. Sicknoki's beautiful blooms, hard to grow for me. If you grow them easily, let me know. I want to hear about it. Um, Stefan Van Kemp and Lewis, I will link his channel down below. He grows them really well, way better than me, so check him out. My Cloesia or Cloesia Rebecca, Rebecca Northern also died. It was small. I, it wasn't vigorous. Maybe I just, I'm good with catacetums, but Cloesiums, Cloesia, 
Cloesia, Cloacetum, I don't know. Um, just, yeah, we'll move on. Okay, this one I was a little sad about, but I don't think this was my fault. This one is the Sophralelio or Lelia Mini Pet, SL Mini Pet. I bought this, one for me, one for my mom. My mom's thrived, mine never grew. The new growths just were smaller and smaller. I potted it up, it just survived. It never thrived, it never grew. I saw my mom's grow, mine never grew. I don't think it was because of my neglect because for the most part, my Catleas did fine. Catleas are pretty good. Um, but I think this one had some sort of infection. It never grew, the plant vigor just wasn't there. This was not my fault. Tulumnia velutinum. Well, this one actually was my environment, so I misclassified this one, but this one just doesn't do well with dryness, and I underwatered. I misclassified that one, but tulumnias, they need a lot of humidity. I don't have that, so that one died. And then the last one is the Paphiopetalum conco bellatulum. This one died. Um, it just wasn't vigorous. It bloomed once. I thought it was the cutest bloom ever, and then it died shortly after. So I don't know if it spent up all the energy after the bloom. I didn't do anything differently. I didn't water the crown or anything like that, but I think the plant vigor on this one was just not the best. All right, you guys are almost at the end. Um, the last set of orchids that died, it was because they are seedlings and when you have seedlings and you don't water them, they don't survive. So if you have seedlings, they're some of the most vulnerable orchids that you can have in your collection. So underwatering isn't a good thing. So if you have seedlings, make sure to water them, keep up with the watering. In my environment, they do well in moss, but if they are in a little two inch clay pot and I don't water for a week, that's definitely not enough. So you have to find a solution to keep them nice and humid, use a humidifier, something like that. Um, the ones that I killed were the Phalaenopsis fasciata, Phalaenopsis bastianii, Catlia luminosa. The pot was just so tiny and it was a little clay pot and yeah, it just didn't last. Phalaenopsis ludemanniana variation pultra, Catlia lilpoldii crossed with Catlia pitea, pitea, I don't know how to pronounce, but Elsie love knot Carmela's blue and Phalaenopsis philippinensis. So if I could do it again, I would water more. <laughs> Seedlings are easiest to kill, so just water them. You made it to the end. So the last two that I killed were for other reasons. Different reasons, but one is my Phalaenopsis schilleriana. I watered the crown by mistake and then it rotted. So this was an error on my part. If you have Phalaenopsis orchids, make sure you don't water the crown and you should be good. And then this other one was gifted to me. This one made me sad, sorry Michael, but this one was the Phragmopedium Olaf Gress. This was given to me and I it had a growth that was growing upwards and I separated the growth and it just had like two or three fans. I separated one of the fans and after I separated the fan, both both orchids declined um, within the same pot. So what I'd say is let your orchids acclimate to your environment first. So I repotted it shortly after receiving it. I divided it right away. Perhaps let your orchid acclimate first and then make sure that it has more fans. I'm not super familiar with Phragmopedium orchids. This was the only one I grew. But if I could do things again, I would leave it before I repotted it for maybe a couple of months and then wait till it had at least four fans and not leave a fan on its own. Um, maybe five fans, maybe I, three and three, something like that. But this one I divided prematurely. So you guys made it to the end. I hope you guys learned um, from my mistakes. And just to recap, um, the biggest mistakes that I made, I think some of the orchids uh, declined because of semi-hydro. Some of them just didn't like the grow environment in semi-hydro. After about two years, I noticed some of them declined. If I could do it again, I would never put my neophonetias in semi-hydro. And my Latoria type dendrobiums, I don't think they do well in semi-hydro at all. The others were seedlings, so it's hit or miss, but I'm starting to move away from semi-hydro. I'm finding that two years after being in the grow method, 
it's not as great as I thought it would be. My cat leaves are doing great, but there's other things that over time I noticed the vigor just declines. So that's something to keep in mind. Some of the deaths are just plant vigor. Um, it's not your fault. So sometimes it happens. Some orchids are just not super strong and maybe they have a, an infection or some sort of thing that's going on in them that you don't know about. So that's not your fault. Seedlings. They're very easy to kill. They're very vulnerable. So you want to water them as much as you can. Give them good humidity because orchid seedlings are very vulnerable to being set back. So if you have any seedlings, just pay them extra attention. If you're going on vacation, um, you have to find a way to keep it very humid or have someone take care of them because they will die very easily on you. Pests are a big factor. You have to stay on top of your collection. Inspect more often than I did. <laughs> um, check once a week, check the leaves and stuff, and then you can avoid an infestation that takes some of your orchids. Another reason for orchids dying is that your environment just isn't suited for the orchids. So in my case, vandas are really difficult to grow. I also didn't set them up for success because I left them super dry. And then lastly, just water more often. I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye everyone.